Soga episode 5 was incredible, but the scenes with Anakin Skywalker actually have sparked a lot of debate. What exactly is the lesson Anakin was trying to teach? How does the dark side and Darth Vader play into that lesson? Was it all a dream, or is that really Anakin teaching his Padawan one last lesson? I think I've got the answer, and I'm surprised at how many people are actually missing the point of this sequence with Anakin in Ahsoka episode five, but that just means that we get to break it down here. And in this video, we're diving deep on what exactly Anakin Skywalker was trying to teach Ahsoka. Also guys, there are just days left in the Kickstarter for my comic book, Unity. Don't miss your chance to get the book, be one of the first people ever to read this awesome new story. And I really appreciate everybody that has supported so far. So I think in order to understand Anakin's lesson, we need to start with the Balin character. And I know you might be like, what? What are you talking about? But just go with me on this. In the preview for episode five that plays before the actual episode, we see two different scenes from episode four with Balin. We first see the scene where Balin is clashing lightsabers with Ahsoka, and he says that your legacy and that of your master is one of death and destruction. And then we see the scene where Balin turns Sabine, convincing her to relinquish the star map back to him and giving all of the villains the ability to go find Grand Admiral Thrawn in this new galaxy. And these two scenes are crucial to understanding the rest of the episode and what lesson Anakin was trying to impart on his old Padawan. Balin turned Sabine by reading her mind and finding a vulnerability. He was able to find her core fear and twist that fear and convince Sabine that the best option for her was to just give the map back. And this is all because Balin knew that the core motivation for Sabine was to go rescue Ezra. But what is less obvious is that Balin did the same thing to Ahsoka while they were fighting and the lines about the legacy of her and her master, those lines are the key vulnerability for the Ahsoka character. It's the guilt and the fact that her legacy is full of so much death and destruction that is weighing on her. It is the thing that is holding her back and it is the thing that Balin is able to twist against her in order to defeat her in combat. She can't fight properly because of that fear, that angst, and because of the weight of her legacy. And this is mirrored in a lot of the conversations that she has with Anakin during these sequences in the world between worlds and within the memory memories, but it's important to remember that this entire conversation begins with Anakin telling Ahsoka that she lost a fight and she's only in the water. She's only dying or fighting for her life because of Balin, because she was beaten in that fight. Again, it's kind of obvious, but we were all so enamored with the craziness of the Clone Wars sequences that maybe we forgot that the whole thing is happening because Ahsoka lost a fight to Balin, who she probably should have just been able to best in combat. So Anakin's talking about how she lost that fight and he's telling her that she needs to keep fighting if she wants to live. So she has to fight to live in the sort of metaphysical sense, like her spirit needs to be fighting in order to give her a fighting chance to actually be pulled out of that water. But she also needs to be able to fight if she's going to face Balin again. She needs to remove this weakness, she needs to get this guilt off of her back so that she can properly step into her role as the warrior who was trained by Anakin Skywalker. And this entire lesson begins with Anakin getting her to fight. She doesn't want to fight, but he gets her to do it anyways, and they have an exchange, and Ahsoka ends up landing a blow on Anakin, and she remarks that it seems like Anakin doesn't have much new to offer. Anakin then says, I haven't shown you everything, and takes out the bridge of the world between worlds, causing Ahsoka to fall into a memory from her past. And in fact, it's one of the first battles that she ever led clones in alongside her master, Anakin Skywalker. Anakin actually takes her to one of the first battles ever where she was being trained and taught. And then he takes her to one of the last battles she's ever had, the Siege of Mandalore. Now, while they're in the memory of this initial battle, Ahsoka 
Ahsoka is still being held back by the guilt of all of the death that came with this mission, the fact that she led these people into battle, and it's ultimately her fault that she lost so many soldiers. And Anakin tells her that she has to get with the times. Anakin explains to her that she was trained in wartime and she needed to be a warrior in order to survive this war. He's talking about her dharma. He's talking about what she had to do, why she is what she is. And it's so cool because we go from this very early memory where she was with her master being trained to be that warrior all the way to the Siege of Mandalore, where Anakin was not there. He wasn't at this battle with her, but as Anakin looks around at the battle, he remarks that his Padawan did well, that she is the warrior that he trained her to be. And I felt like he was kind of saying to her, this is the end of that, where you were well prepared, where you were the warrior I trained you to be, you were the Padawan of Anakin Skywalker and of Darth Vader. Anakin also tells her that she is more than just a warrior because he is more than just a warrior. And although that's left pretty ambiguous, to me, it seemed like Anakin was speaking to the fact that by doing the thing they were supposed to do, by walking their journey in the legacy of Jedi, they are so much more than just a warrior. But part of what they are is a warrior like they absolutely had to play that role that's what they are but especially when it came to anakin and i think when it comes to ahsoka as well they're much more than a warrior their destiny goes beyond that and the balancing of the force the idea of ahsoka being this force for good that has to fight against the dark side all of these concepts and ideas basically make you more than just a warrior anakin's talking to her about legacy talking about being a part of a line that everything that he was the good and the bad is now in ahsoka this is where it all comes to a head because ahsoka cannot get over the legacy she can't get over the fact that she is the apprentice of darth vader that anakin was more powerful and dangerous than anybody thought and anakin kind of gives her this look and says so that's what this is about essentially to me saying this is what's holding you back you can't get over the fact that your legacy is connected to Anakin and also Darth Vader. He remarks that she's learned nothing and that they have to go back to the beginning. I gave you a choice, he says. Fight or die. And it's at this point where Anakin just turns the heat up. He goes full on Darth Vader and starts attacking her with the ferocity of the dark side. And I think the lesson here is that just like you were defeated with Balin, you will be defeated by a dark side enemy with conviction if you don't shed this guilt and wait. And she ultimately steps up to the plate and embraces that ferocity, that warrior that she is, and she's able to best Anakin. And she even flashes the Sith eyes to him. And that's really interesting. And it felt like to me, this was her acknowledging that yes, she does have everything that Anakin had in her. She has the propensity for the light and she has the propensity for the dark. She does carry the legacy of Darth Vader, but just like Luke Skywalker, she actually walks away from the dark side. She throws the saber away and says, I choose to live. But this is Ahsoka stepping up into her warrior role, perhaps realizing what the lesson is about fighting and yet also having her own agency and refusing to go to the dark side like Anakin did. But I think it's important that she shows him that yes, she does have the dark side within her. I've talked about this before, but it feels very similar to the idea of the shadow self from Carl Jung and this idea that you have this ability to be dark, you have these dark desires, you have this part of you that's violent and brutal, and instead of repressing that or acting like it's separate, it's best to integrate that side of your personality with the other side so that you can better control it. And while I think that part in particular is up for a lot of interpretation and the whole lesson itself is 
up for interpretation. I think the fact that it is anchored in this idea of her losing a fight to Balin and the fact that she needs to be the fighter, the warrior that Anakin trained her to be, she needs to embrace that while also shedding this guilt and, and all of these negative feelings when it comes to her legacy. Her legacy is incredible, and yes, it has darkness within it, but that's her dharma. And to me, this is very similar to the ideas that are expressed in the Bhagavad Gita, this holy book in the Hindu religion that basically talks about a prince who needs to fight this huge battle against some of his own family members in order to become the rightful ruler. And in that story, the prince doesn't want to do this, doesn't want the death and the destruction and all of these people to die. And Krishna, the god of everything, basically explains to this prince that this is the prince's dharma. This is what the prince is supposed to do. And yes, there is a price that needs to be paid, but you have to step into your role. And to be honest with you, this could be by design by Dave, as a lot of these spiritual ideas are in Star Wars already, but even the character name Ahsoka itself is a play on the name Ashoka, who was that Indian emperor from the Bhagavad Gita. So I think it's a subtle thing, a nuanced thing, but also I do think it's a deliberate lesson being taught by Anakin to Ahsoka, but I think there's plenty of room for us as the viewers to speculate on the meaning, to have conversations, to interpret it our own way, and I think that's really cool. I know there are some people that wish it was a little bit more direct, but I found it to be fascinating, and I actually like the idea of it being able to be interpreted in different ways and for us to try to wrap our hand around it. That is cool. Of course, let me know what you think about this episode and the lesson that Anakin taught in the comment section below here. You can come on by a live stream as well, where you can ask me directly about anything that happened in the episode or that I talked about in this video. Go check out Unity. Just a few days left to get your copy of that comic book. And as I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day, and I'll see you in the next video.